In this tutorial video, we'll talk about the crossed aldol reaction. So specifically, we're going to look at the aldol reaction between two different aldehydes. And what we'll see as we logically produce our electrophile enolate table is that we can get a very complex mixture from this reaction. So let's go ahead and start with So ethanol, and we're going to react that with propanol. We'll use basic conditions. And what we want to do is basically predict the products. So to do that, let's, let's take a logical approach. We'll identify electrophile in column 1, enolate column 2, and then we'll draw the products to the right. So let's, let's look at the crossed products first. Let's start with ethanol as the electrophile, and then we'll generate the enolate from propanol. And we're going to say that's going to go to product A. So we've got the alpha carbons, the nucleophile, it's attacking the carbonyl carbon of the electrophile. Again, the general product is a beta hydroxyaldehyde. So there's, there's the crossed product number one, we're labeling that A. So cross product number two, we're going to have propanol be the electrophile, and then ethanol be the enolate. We'll call this product B. So now let's look at the self condensation product. So we'll look at ethanol first from our prior example. That's going to go to C. And then finally the last self. That's going to go to product D. So from what we've drawn so far, we've we've predicted four products. So let's let's keep track of this. First Approximation is four products. However, when we examine these a little bit closer, we're going to see that um, some of these products have stereogenic carbons. So, what I want to do is put an asterisk by them in, in, in red here. So, the red asterisk is going to be a stereogenic carbon. So if we come along, we hit this alpha carbon here, we see that has four unique substituents, as does this beta. So the cross condensation that we're labeling A is not just going to give one product. It's actually going to give two to the two, so four 
possible stereoisomers. So we're, we're, we're beyond four already. Let's go ahead and look at, at B. We come along the chain here. We finally hit a stereogenic carbon at the beta carbon. So this is actually going to be two possible stereoisomers. So we're at six so far. So our second approximation, we're, we're, we're beyond four. Again, uh, for our first uh, self-condensation, we have two possible stereoisomers. So we're up to eight. And then our final self, we have a stereogenic carbon there and there. So that's 2 to the 2. So again, that's 4. So our, our second approximation here. is that we're actually going to produce 12 products. So in, in terms of synthetic efficiency in taking starting materials to produce one product, you can see that this is going to give us a pretty complex mixture of things. So what I want to do next is look at what are the four possible stereoisomers uh, for example, A here, and then you can go through and, and do the other three uh, as a check for yourself. So we're going to continue our discussion about the stereochemistry. Of this crossed aldol reaction and why product A is actually four different stereoisomers. So if we consider what reaction A was, we were taking ethanol as our electrophile, and then we were using this enolate from propanol. So that was giving us product A. So the reason that we end up with four possible stereoisomers, if you consider that The nucleophile has two faces at the alpha carbon. So it has the face, the front of the whiteboard, and then the reverse of the whiteboard. So either face can attack. So we'll say two alpha faces of nucleophile. And then the carbonyl carbon, which is acting as the electrophile, that can be attacked from the front face or the rear face. So two faces of electrophile. So the combination of those is uh, an explanation of why we get four possible stereoisomers. So what I want to do is draw those out and show the relationships between them. So now we're going to be showing wedge dash. So the first one I'm going to just draw just arbitrary to show So this first one I'm going to draw arbitrary with both um, substituents coming out of the board. So I've just arbitrarily drawn that one. Now what I want to do is, is draw the mirror image of that. So we're going to use two dashes.
So the relationship between these two, which I'll show with this arrow in red. So red is red are enantiomers. And then what I'm going to show in, in the green arrow are diastereomers. So if we look at our original structure that we've drawn, if we want to draw a diastereomer, that means we're going to flip one of these stereogenic carbons. Let's go ahead and flip that one to the wedge, or the dash, excuse me. So this is now a diastereomer. So in our green marker with our arrow, the relationship between those is diastereomeric. And we can see that the existing relationship between this and this, these are diastereomers, is now that um, this stereogenic carbon has flipped. So we can put that green arrow in. And then finally, if we draw the enantiomer of this, both of those stereogenic carbons will flip. And what remains to be done here is to show the relationship. So these are enantiomers. And then we have two more relationships to talk about. So these two are going to be diastereomers. And then finally, these two will be diastereomers as well. So we can tell visually that these are enantiomer mirror images. The green arrows are diastereomers. But how do we use the kahn ingold prelog designations to actually um, communicate the names of these structures if we had to do that. So let's go ahead and start with this alpha carbon here. Let me draw in the hydrogen so that gives us some guidance of our substituents. So we're focusing on this carbon. The lowest priority group is going to be the hydrogen, so that's four. Now if we go out, we have a carbon, a carbon, and a carbon. So how do we make our decision? Well, these two carbons have oxygen. Specifically, this one has two oxygens. So you can think of the double bond as, as two single bonds to oxygen. So that's going to get priority one. Therefore, this one's going to get priority two. And then finally, this methyl here is priority three. So with the lowest priority group going back in terms of the dash, we see that at this carbon, the, the steering wheel is going counterclockwise. So that's going to be the S configuration. And since we've done it for, for one at the alpha carbon, we know that the mirror image has to be the opposite R. And then we can just go through the other ones and, and determine that as well. So this, this one's the same, so that's going to be R. And then this carbon's the same as this one, so that's going to be S. So once we've drawn out the products, to, in determining the first stereogenic carbon, it, it's pretty straightforward to just sign the other ones. So let's do the beta carbon here. We'll put in the lowest substituent, which we just uh, haven't shown. There it is, it's four. So now we have oxygen, carbon, carbon. So oxygen's gonna be our, our top priority is one. We have carbon and carbon. This has three hydrogens. This has a carbon and extra carbon. So that's gonna get priority two. This will be priority three. So we can see in this case that we're going clockwise now. 
So that's going to get the R designation. So we see that this flips. These two are not the same, so that's R. This flips, so that's S. So since the aldehyde is the, the parent, that's going to be carbon 1. This is carbon 2, so we would call this the 2S, 3R. Its enantiomer is 2R, 3S. 2S, 3S, and then finally 2R, 3R. So by doing the Conningold prelog in, in orange here, we're now able to communicate the, the stereochemical information for each of these beta hydroxy aldehydes.